some doubles. J Dog back to answer some more goddamn questions. First goddamn question. J Dog's faves again. Mike Cardoso. Fucking a paid old order question. Sent 1666 too instead of 10 bucks. Now that's a real fucking devil right there, goddammit. But that's actually really not a question. It's, more, it's another goddamn review, which I'm sure you guys fucking hate. Well, actually, I don't know. It seems like you guys actually kind of like because, uh, you know, it's funny. We had the rancid amputation in stock. And the guy, guy bought, bought his little bum. <laughs> He's going to know by the time. Because this is, uh, we oversold him the damn thing. We only, but we only had like uh, three copies or some shit. Um, people liked it and picked it up. Like Mo Sean Moscalic, who orders like every goddamn week. And he's from Ohio, which is weird because I don't think I've ever met the guy. At least not to my knowledge. At least he never came up to me and said it. I don't know his name. Uh, but he's from Ohio. And then I haven't seen him at a show or something. Again, not knowingly anyways. Because uh, he, yeah, he orders all the fucking time. He bought the Rancid Amputation and somebody else. Uh, but yeah, oversold on it. And um, someone in the other reviews, somebody said that they, 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 they really liked it because it's so, I don't know, maybe you guys don't like Because I know at the beginning when the first review went up, uh-oh, I know where this is going to go. You know, people are going to be sending J-Dog canoe shit. I, I, don't, I never got it. Yeah, so far, no, no canoe shit came through as far as reviews. Uh, like I said, not everything would be something I'd run out and buy and stuff that other reviews. But I mean, I was all respectable metal. I didn't get no goddamn fucking... Uh, you know, fucking Slipknot, Blink-182, or fucking Disturbed, or any bullshit in there. So, and send it over if you want. I mean, but I'll give my honest and goddamn opinion. Definitely get a good laugh on those. Uh, anyways, uh, his review is this. Justin, could you please shout out, slash check out my band, I Destroyer. So, I'll write out the gates. Uh, I'm going to say, yeah, the name is kind of, a, I wouldn't say a turnoff, but it's just definitely not stand out as to where, like, the way I think of it, when you're, if you're having a band name, you want something that's going to be memorable, stick out, fit the bill, but also where you don't got to fucking explain it or spell it out for the person when you're talking to somebody. Like, for example, when you, I say I destroy her, what does that mean? Like, I, like what? Like, your, your, your I? No, the, the letter I, comma, there should be no goddamn commas or, or <laughs> shit like that in your goddamn band title, because it, it just makes it confusing. And then the word destroyer. So the letter I, comma, space, destroyer. That's how you type it on Metal Archives, too, because I already did that, searched it. Um, so we'll get to that. So the name alone is kind of just, it's uh, it's just going to make it a little bit harder for your band to kind of go anywhere. It's as stupid as that sounds. It's just little things like that fucking matter. It's just going to be harder to find. Like, let's just say you're going to blow up. You're getting to, like, fucking midnight size or something. It's just it's harder on a Google search. Again, you're talking to your buds. So what, what is it? I? Like, how do you spell it? Is it, is it wall one word? Is there dashes? No, there's a, there's a comma in there? What the fuck? Am I typing a sentence? It just makes it a little bit more confusing. For Providence, Rhode Island. So USA band from the little state of fucking Rhode Island. Pretty sure the small state in the goddamn uh, U.S. Could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it's a small state. Is it? Correct me if I'm goddamn wrong. I think you'll like it. Uh, and he sends me the band camp link, which I listen to it. The channel is great. I'm loving it. Let me know if you like a shirt of the band. Thanks for for keeping it old school and no pussy shit. Best, Mike. Uh, yeah, if you got a 2X, I would take a 2X. Uh Mike, and I'll show him. I'll wear it on camera, and I'll show it, and I and I will wear it because I actually did like it. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is um so I'll, like I said my honest review. So let's go through and give the whole goddamn shout out so everyone knows what you guys are all about. So like I said, go to Metal Archives. You want to see their whole discography? Capital I, letter I, comma space destroyer, D E S T R O Y E R for all you illiterate fucks out there. Um. It's, Comes up, yeah, from Providence, United States, Providence, Rhode Island. Formed in 2003. They, they, they uh, genre styled as thrash speed metal, which, yeah, I would say with, a, with some uh, kind of like more blackish style uh, black and, uh, vocals. Or the raspy, the sick vocals, which is generally like how I like my goddamn thrash. I mean, there's exceptions to the rule. Like, like, I like the first three anthrax Frank records a lot. And that, that's an exception. You know, first two Megadeths, early Metallicas. But generally speaking, I like more the, the raspy, the sick, fucking uh, violent players, you know, shit like Slaughter Lord, you know what I mean? And uh, First Sacrifice, things like that. This was kind of more, doesn't sound like Slaughter Lord or Sacrifice, but it's more of that violent shit, you know what I mean? So their first, so <laughs> we pull out the backlog a little bit. So they started, two, formed in 2003, but first demo came out in 2005. So in my opinion, your band started out in 2005. Their de uh, first demo in 2005 was a... Um, was a self-titled, and then they did a demo, a promo in 2008, a demo in 2014, demo in 2019, 
And then what he had me reviewed was Cold Dead Hands EP 2023. Now, it's on Bandcamp. Now, I think this is a physical format of it. And what is all this digital dumb shit, brah, brah? You must be a young buck. A lot of action. I don't know. If the band started in 2003, you probably got them from around my goddamn age. Let's see what kind of tough guys you got in these members. We got Barbaraz on guitar lead and vocals since 2003. Let's see how old Barbaraz is. He's too tough to put it in there. Yeah, his name's Mike Cardoso. Age not available. Too tough to put it in there. Uh, he's also on a band called Haxen. Not the one we did. H A X E N. Which I'm not familiar with. It sounds kind of familiar, the name, but I can't say I know it. Then there's Poison on Bass, 2017. He was in the Ashpool Haxen as well. It looks like these were previous Haxen guys. War Mentum on guitars and uh, Raytheon on drums. But he's, a, he's a newbie, goddammit. He's just started in 2022. He's been the band for a year. A year at best, goddammit. That's because I want Monty started. So, anyways, all I heard was Cold Dead Hands. I actually listened to it front to back on, uh, on Shit Camp, which I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer a physical copy, but for checking out, it does it does fit the goddamn bill. So I'm seeing on here, um, if you are, it just says buy digital track, buy the full digital album. Yeah, bro, bro, you got to get some type of physical fucking uh, thing. Like, that, that's that's uh, one advice out the gate. And uh, send over a shirt, send me a CDR, bro, bro. Do this. You want to please the dog? Send me a goddamn disc with all your shit on there. I want to hear your demos and stuff, too, because I did like it. Um, songs on this were, uh, I'm on, I'm on, Last clicked off on Chains of the Accursed Graves, but more music. So, yeah, this is six songs Oracle, Chains of the Accursed Graves, Total Vengeance, A Prophecies of Final War, Speed Kills, and Strike. Six total songs. And uh, came out this year. Covers kind of, yeah, looks 80s as fuck. It's kind of like, you know. Gives me a feeling of maybe like Exciter slash Motley Crue, maybe. It's a good guy with leather gloves holding the guitar, so not overly cool, but you know, not bad either. So all in all, I will say this. This the, this style, in the, and since the early 2000s and shit, kind of since, honestly, since bands like Toxic Holocaust started back up, it's, um, that style became very, very, like, kind of overdone. But what uh, I liked about this is, uh, again, like I said, it's, it's not necessarily that it's got to be original, but standout songs. And, you know, the faster parts kind of like, yeah, you know, cool. You know, I've, I've heard this a million times. But what I liked, I liked more the, the, the breakdown, slowy fucking, uh, not slow, you know, the, the catchy fucking parts. Uh, the, the, the chunky parts. I liked those. Those were definitely really catchy right at first listen out the goddamn gate. And, uh, yeah, it's just for that fan base, you know, of um, Toxic Holocaust, Sodom, Witch Trap. Victimizer, Farscape, um, yeah, Early Sacrifice. I'm not saying it sounds like these, but if you like those bands, this is going to be up your alley. But with uh, at least this recording, kind of a more modern, you know, 2000s production, not overproduced, but not like raw, like Obsessed by Cruelty, or not raw, like um, Witch Trap Sorcerer's Bitch or Witching Wild, things like that. It's a little bit more uh, crisp than that. So, you know, professional sounding, but uh, primitive as far as the music, if that makes goddamn fucking sense. No, no, I was good. I'd take a goddamn fucking shirt and uh, a CDR would be cool because I'm not going to sit there and listen to no fucking digital bullshit all the time. The only thing I use digital for is uh, YouTube at, at the gym, like just playing songs here and there, just audio in general. And um, for, for music, anyway, is what I'm talking about. It's something I use uh, <clears throat> digital for other than that. If it's something I want to like. Or call myself a fan. I don't call myself a fan of anything unless I own as long as I own something by them. It's kind of my rule. You're not a fan. If, how are you a fucking fan if you don't own anything by them? You, you didn't think it was good enough to buy. You know what I mean? But you'll go out and buy some dumbass fucking Jordan sneakers or something. You know, you don't mind spending money on that. So you can't be that big of a goddamn fucking fan. That's just what that's how I view it. That's how I've always seen it. So, so yeah, go check out fucking Eye Destroyer. It's uh two paws up approved. Um you know, it's, it's not the next goddamn bathroom or anything, but it's it, it was definitely a solid fucking listen. I was thoroughly fucking entertained. And if you're in uh, speed, thrash, black, and supposed, you know, even like stuff like Gospel of Horns, uh, maybe a little bit more, uh, yeah, speed metal primitive than that, uh, a little less black metal-ish, but, it, but fans of that too, you know, some of that Aussie, 
like Mongols Cross, Grenade, yeah, all that stuff. I mean, if you're a fan of that, this would be up your alley, too. It's for that fan base. A lot of the Chilean scene, you know what I'm saying? Slaw Bath, things like that. Again, I'm not saying it sounds like these bands, but it's for that fan base. I got to describe those fucking idiots were like, if I was Cannibal Corpse, the same fan base is severe culture. The I'm going to drop you on your head one too many times, how's it fucking not? How dumb do you got to be? I didn't say it sounds just like them. Does vile sound like feasting on blood? No, but it's the same goddamn fan base. So, for the people that got fucking brain cells, I think you fucking got it, goddamn. For example, if you're the fan base of Dame Uborg and Cradle of Filth, this might not be your alley. If you're a fan base of fucking Last Days of Humanity, this might not be your up your alley. Should I mention, if you are a fan of that as well, this is up your goddamn alley. Go check the fuck out. I don't know if it's on YouTube, though. I didn't check that. He just gave me the Bandcamp link. But, um, not Bandcamp, minimally. I spelled it out for you, goddamn, three times. You guys, you guys go look it up, goddamn it. Anyways, order goddamn question. This is going to be Mr. Bummed Out Antonio. Antonio Gapoff. What's up, J-Dog? Stoked on Rancid Amputation. Yeah, well, you're going to be stoked that it's not stoked that it's out of stock. <laughs> so I just emailed you now with uh, ask for a replacement item or if you wanted a refund. Your order would be uh, sufficient, and I'll send out the rest. Your order, I don't know if I go through order. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, what is the most annoying thing you've seen at a show? Example would be like the opening band doesn't stay for the headliner or something like that. I wouldn't care about that. Not to mention, I wouldn't even pay attention. I wouldn't even know. Uh, but I could see that. It was, that wouldn't surprise me. A lot of bands. I, I guess I didn't mean, even cross my mind. I wouldn't really give a shit what they do. Uh, the most annoying thing is uh, going to the, see the bands. And, and again, not fitting the fucking bill. The, I mean, the conversation I've already had down here it's 10 million times. So I don't want to, you know, completely beat a dead horse. Again, dude, when I go see, I see Frozen Soul and I, and I hear the music. I'm like, it's pretty good. Go see some push-ups in the pit. The guy's literally talking like, dude, I, I literally... If you would have blocked out the tunes and only gave me the in-between uh, talking between the songs, I'm not even exaggerating. I would have thought I was at an Limp Bizkit show. Like, dude, what are you fucking doing? You're not Tupac. You're not Snoop. Why are you talking like that? Like, get down. Give me some push-ups in the pits, bro. When this fat ass can't even do any fucking push-ups based on how he fucking looked. Just stupid shit. It's like, that ain't death metal, bro, bro. Go fucking look at Le Like an Ever-Flowing Stream for the 10th millionth fucking time. That's death metal. Look at fucking... Uh, Magnus, Scarlet Slaughter. That's metal as fuck. Go look at the first two Impiety albums. That's metal, dude. That's what metal looks like. That's what metal should look like. Go on and just watch your, your, your almighty guys at band that you guys fucking hate. Cannibal Corpse. Go watch them live. Corpse Grinder. Fucking headbanging like a motherfucker. That's metal, bro. Push-ups in the fucking pit and talking like you're goddamn from the hood. That ain't metal. So either that or going to see fucking baseball caps, baggy blue jeans, fucking shit. Baggy shorts, any of that shit. Sports jersey, I just want to punch you in the fucking face when I see that. That's the that's by far the goddamn worst. They got a goddamn a, a fucking a, a shack of uh, 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 what is that? Orlando Magic fucking shack jersey on, or the equivalent of dumbass fucking shit is today. Right, right. Get that the flying ass fuck off. That's got no. I mean, again, you look at fucking like Magnus, and then you look at like. You're to give the outsider two album covers. One had that jersey on that. They'd be like, "This kid, this can't be the same kind of music. It just can't be. This is not the same scene." They think they are. So that's it. Because that's not a show. Not at a Raiders game, bro, bro. I didn't come here to see sports jerseys. You're not going to go shoot some fucking hoops. Get the fucking shorts off. You're not going to a ball game. You don't need a hat on. It's not what I went came and said. I didn't go to the ball game. Came to a metal show. Came here to see metal. You know what I mean? Go to an Italian restaurant. You expect to see Italian food on the metal, right? Menu, right? And if it's got nothing but fucking tacos and burgers on there, you're like, fuck shit is this? So there's going to be pizza, fucking lasagna, spaghetti, chicken parmesan on there, raviolis. Why is there tacos and burgers? If I wanted that, I would have went to fucking the, the, the goddamn Mexican restaurant. Makes sense? <laughs> I know there's going to be some idiots that don't think it does. Don't know how they get by on life, but that's the most annoying shit by far. Any the fuck who ordered goddamn, I mean, uh, channel goddamn questions. Injured Chuck, question marks. What about a top 10 nun slaughter seven inches? I don't know if I'd be able to get top 10 without fucking uh, going through the whole collection uh, one by one, but I can definitely tell you my uh, some of the tops. Burn the Cross, Cerebus. Probably, those two are probably my favorite. They're interchangeable. Uh, Trifurcate. The Bog People. Funny thing is about the Bog People, I remember when that was first recorded. It was on a cassette. 
And I met up with uh, the, the uh, print shop I used to work for. No, it wasn't printing records. It was, it was, it was literally printing shit for fucking um, State Farm crap. Boring shit. Not the metal related, nothing like that. Oh, they worked for a, a, a printing company. Yeah, a printing company that was printing dumb fucking forms and stuff. Or Dick Tracy's. I think they know what the fuck's going on. See, I knew they don't have their own goddamn wrecking rushing plant. Never worked for a rushing plant. Blah. What did I say that? Get your head out of your ass before you're going to say something fucking stupid. So anyways, while I was doing that, but we were running hells at the same time, because, you know, we didn't start being able to do this full time. I, I had to work a day job for years on end. At the same time of doing hells, you know, working fucking from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed, seven days a week, literally for years on end, which wasn't fun. Um, that's what it takes if you want to get a bit. That's why all these guys, they start something. They're like, it's not going anywhere. They're throwing towels, three months. For three months, blah, blah. That's, that's, that's like three hours. When I said overnight, I meant fucking five years minimum. It takes time. So that's why nobody succeeds. Patient as fuck. Um, but I remember work, when I was working there, I don't remember, but Kanye met up with me there. I was working an overtime day on Saturday. You get off, you do 6, to two, 6 a.m. to 2. I got off at two, and for whatever reason, he met me there for something. We got in his car, and he had the uh, tape for the uh, the Bog People Seven Inch, and uh, just you know, anybody that knew Jim, when I say knew, I'm like actually hung out with him and listened to shit when he was excited about stuff. He was the most fun person to uh, listen to anything for him. He was just fun as fuck. Um, I mean, immediately, Cryptic Eon and Haunted Places. I thought those songs were super standoutish. Especially the, the raw recording, it's kind of it's the more than like the demo recording for those because then they were re-recorded. I forget which release, which are good too, but it's a studio recording. But again, I probably like the uh, the, the if you want to call it demo version, but that was the version on that seven inch. I like those more. That was the first thing I heard before it was even out. Jim was all excited. We just these are our brand new songs that we just recorded, and um, I loved it. I, I mean, I, the Bog people. I thought that song was kind of silly, but in a good way. I liked it. Um, but it was funny how they titled the um, seven inch after that uh, song name. But I thought I thought Haunted Places and Cryptic Eons were the best songs on there. And not to mention, I'd actually think those are some of the best songs in the entire catalog. So um, what is it? Burn the Cross, Cerebus, Try Forget, Bog People, uh, Fuck the Bastard. Specifically, I like that seven inch. The whole seven inch is good, but specifically for the song Fuck the Bastard. I think that's one of the best uh, Nunslaughter songs, too. Uh, it's only one song, but it's a cool split, too, of the Nunslaughter Cyanide split. It's a really cool fucking split, and it's cool that Nunslaughter, and it would make sense that Nunslaughter do a split with Cyanide. But, um, because since we're talking about Nunslaughter, you asked for Nunslaughter, seven inches, uh, Sick by the Sight of Christ, because that's, that's the song that's on that seven inch. Um, it's just one song in each band. Uh, that's one of my favorite Nunslaughter songs as well. So, there's some for you. I know those, for sure. Probably in the times. But in order, top ten, and to the rest, I would have to go, go, uh, go through them. Uh, Akbarize isn't the singer of Disturbed gay? Question mark. Don't even know what the motherfucker's name is. If so, it fits the bill for the Disturbed scene. It sure fucking does. But at the same time, it's you're probably one of those guys too, where you rip on them and say that, and like hate on bands. I got a gay guy in there, but yeah, Judas Priest is fucking great. Again, it's dude, it's the same fucking uh, uh the the one way motherfuckers. Can't say nothing about Motorhead, Iron Maiden, Misfits, or Black Sabbath. We're being sold in Hot Topic. They sell fucking Cradle of Filter, Cannibal Corpse. They get the posers, sellouts. Slayer? I mean, what, what, are, you, what are you talking about, dude? But the, the, what, what I'm saying is they won't rip on those bands. They won't rip on Maiden. They won't rip on Sabbath. They won't rip on Motorhead. They won't rip on Slayer. I'm like, those bands were, A, sold in Hot Topic first. B, they're sold in fucking even bigger stores than Hot Topic. And I know because I've seen it. Iron Maiden is probably, oh, and Metallica, for sure. But I mean, most people rip on Metallica. Even if the, even the guys that like the good albums uh, still rip on them, so uh, they kind of don't get a pass. I'll get by, by by the masses for the most part. But uh, the bands that do, for sure, out of all the bands that get the biggest pass, I would say Iron Maiden is the most sold out of all of them. Where you, dude, I've I've seen Iron Maiden shirts, no exaggeration. I've seen Iron Maiden Killers, the album that everybody likes, including myself, in Walmart. In Walmart, one sided Killer shirts. Yes, I've seen them. Eight ninety nine. Glad I've seen it with my own eyeballs. Not I heard about it. Not somebody told me. Not I think. Not I'm pretty sure. Not I was online. And I was walking into the goddamn store and seen it. Well, we got nothing to say about that, though. Same thing with priests. You know, they'll rip on all these fucking oh, guys. Got a gay man in there. Yeah, but priest, priest, priest. Fucking priest does nothing wrong. It's nothing wrong. I like priests, too. 
Uh, when I heard Halford was gay or something like that, it was kind of like, yeah, no shit. Like, nothing before he announced it. I mean, granted, I, when I heard I mean, it was so young, is when it was announced, but it's kind of like, those 70s and 80s albums, no shit he is. Like, I mean, did anyone think otherwise? Uh, but personally, I didn't give a fuck. I didn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't listening to the band to fuck the guy. I was listening to the band because it was fucking jamming ass fucking heavy metal. Um, what he does with his dick, I really don't care. That's, that, that's, that's, that's bitch shit, bro, bro. But no, but another dude cares what another man's doing with his dick. I question how fucking gay you are. Um, kind of like what they say in the scenes. You know, the guy that's bitching about the posers the most is the biggest fucking poser. But you, J-Dog. Well, I'm just saying, I'm not, not my words, theirs. <laughs> I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying I've heard that. Uh, let's get. Let's see if we get one more in here. Let's see if we kind of long. Well, that's good. It's got a lot of space. It's good. It's Rick G. Yo, 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 J-Dog. Have you seen the video recently of Nada Frost of Carpathian Forest falling off stage while wearing a red shirt and Adidas track pants? It's hilarious. Uh, I have not. The reason I put this in there is because our Carpathian Forest is playing um, Maryland Death Fest. And I would love to uh, uh, interview Nata Frost, Nata Frost, however the fuck you pronounce his name. Um, didn't really, I mean, I never really given a solo project that much of a, a chance just because I've heard it once. I'm like, eh, I don't really like it. And there's only one release, and I know he's got more than one release. Uh, but I like Carpathian Forest. Carpathian Forest is one of those bands. It's like even every release. It's got songs where you're like, what the fuck is this doing on there? Like, just dumbass filler garbage. But their black metal songs, straight up jamming songs, are fucking awesome. Some of the catchiest black metal ever written, in my goddamn opinion. Um, so I was a big fan, and I've never seen Carpathian before, so I want to see them live. I will say this, though. I have seen one interview with uh, Nana Frost, Nana Frost on, on YouTube. Can't remember which one it was, and it was within reasonable time frame, not in the last 10 years or so. A, his English is not very good. That's on a slight of him. I'm sure my fucking Norwegian is a hell of a lot goddamn worse than his English, so he's smarter than I am. So it's not a knock on the guy. I'm just saying it'll be hard to do an interview if he doesn't speak much English. Um, that, so that might be a problem. Well, two the biggest problems, I'm, I doubt I'm going to see the motherfuckers. He's probably rock starting up with John Gallagher backstage. Um, that'd be my assumption. Could be wrong. And I'll try to get him on last round, but I, I doubt it's going to happen. Um, and I will say this after watching the interview, I was slightly disappointed. Slightly disappointed. Another one of these guys that you could, I don't remember if his exact words, but it was highly insinuated, or at least my fucking, uh, I guess for a lack of better uh, terms, poser radar growing off. I'm like, another guy. Another guy. Burn out. It's not into it. Why are we talking about rock and roll, dude? Are you an extreme metal or not? You're a black metal band that started when that demo came out, 92, I think. That Bloodlust demo, I think it was 92, right? Maybe 93. I don't, even think, I don't think it was 91. It was either 92 or 93. But regardless, it's like, dude, you should be talking about the stuff that you're in. I get it if you're not fucking into fucking uh, Toxic Holocaust. Because it was years later. Maybe you're slightly burnt out and you care. But, dude, you should still be fucking passionate about the shit that reason you started a black metal band. Mayhem, Bathory, Sarcophago, Venom, Celtic Cross, Merciful Fates. Fucking Necrovore, Slaughter Lord, even None Slaughter. It was probably before you should be fucking listening to that. Deceased, you even listen to that. I mean, why, why aren't these idiots bringing up fucking Deceased? Those Deceased death demos, like Evil Side of Religion demo, Nuclear Exorcist demo, Birth by Radio. Dude, that's death metal as fuck. And it was way before any of those fucking chomos. And I'm sure, and the reason I bring them up is because I'm sure he liked the 80s death metal. But was he probably into the 90s stuff? Cannibal Corpse fucking. Uh, suffocations, morticians, immolations, well, immolations, Davies too. So they, they like that too. My goddamn book, probably not. Uh, possessed. He probably grew up listening to that. It's fucking death. Why was any of that mentioned? I'm hearing about a bunch of geezer ass fucking dad rock. Why? Why? You're in a black metal band. You started this. Why am I not hearing about that? That's where the disappointment was coming from. And again, I'm not saying you're not allowed to like. Other stuff on top of it. I don't give a shit if you like Snoop Doggy Dog on top of it. But when you're on a fucking metal interview, metal fucking channel, why are we talking about dumb shit that people don't want to go? Oh, that, that's what you listen to? I thought you were going to say, like, fucking First Bathory. I thought you were going to say Iron or I. I thought you were going to say something, like, along those lines. It's not. It's like, yeah, we're looking to do more rock and roll. Don't paraphrase me. I mean, it's a long time since I heard the interview over a year ago, and the interview's a little older. Uh, I just remember, I remember going on there, up. Oh, Another burnout Nurgal. Another guy that's... Why even an extreme metal band, man, if you don't like it? Why? Makes no goddamn sense to me. It just makes no fucking sense why you're doing it if you're not into it. Again, 
It's the it's literally the equivalent of me starting. I'm gonna be a rapper. I don't listen to rap. Why would I do rap? And then when they interview me, ah, dude, I'm in the fucking you know cannibal corpse, deicide, suffocation with the, the fucking tish, man. I don't listen to this shitty ass rap. Snoop Dogg, Tupac, who likes that? They they would literally be looking at me like, why are you rapping? But you come to the metal scene, nobody calls it out but me. I'm the only one. And then they people run back in the decade, dog. No fuck, I didn't say you weren't dumbass. Is that what the fuck I'm saying? I was like, but when you get interviewed and all it is is a bunch of geezer shit or what's in my bag, and it's a bunch of fucking hippie dumbass shit, fucking Opeth child molester guy, you're just like, what the what the fuck is going on? Like, why are these guys in extreme metal bands? Why are you in this scene? It makes no goddamn sense. And then people are like, oh, okay. Captain J Dog, you don't think to call them out. Fucking, they were around before you were. Well, they sure as fucking around afterwards. They're, they're, they're long gone out. They just so happen to play off it because they're collecting a paycheck. Like, yeah, but what about Glenn Batman? You get the fucking pass because Glenn at least fucking admits it. He, he, he point blank says when they ask, I don't like this shit. Watch the fucking interviews. He says it to not just even the recent ones. He said it in the past ones when I, when I first said this. Even my buddy called me out. He's like, oh, no, I think Glenn likes stuff. I was like, no, he doesn't, bro. And then a recent interview comes out last year, and he fucking says it. Dude, I'm listening to Rush. I don't even listen to stupid death metal. DCA yeah, makes no bones about it. Doesn't try to put on the court playing act all tough, all black metal, Mr. Fucking Evil. And he's going home and playing goddamn ZZ Top. You know what I mean? So at least, yeah, he makes no goddamn bones about it. But at the same time, I do question what the fuck is he doing metal for either. Glad he is, because I love it. Um, if he doesn't like it, now granted, I know what his reason is for a goddamn paycheck. But I'm saying a lot of these guys, they walk around. Seems like more so the European guys, too. Like they're the fucking next goddamn Jeff Becerra or something. And it's like, dude, you don't even listen to this shit. You know, it's, it's just it's just slightly, slightly annoying in that goddamn sense. That's why, dude, I love when I I, I uh, interview the Will Romers or something. And they're still passionate about it. You know, says he has 15,000 CDs, 5,000 LPs, and he's naming underground shit. Did you hear one fucking geezer ass rock band out of him? Other than when he was talking about when he first got into it as a Kiss, bands like Kiss and shit. Yeah, in the 70s, that's all that was the most. He got into the most extreme shit that was out at the time. And then immediately, yeah, got into Venom, changed my life. And he's been all there since. He's not going home and listening to Nazareth and dumb shit. So that's why I have a, a, another reason why I just have a hell of a lot more respect because it's guys of his age caliber that's rare as fuck. It's never that way. They're not either, you know, by 30 years old, they're burnout. Fucking burnout. Get lost, get fucked, Rob. Rob, you burn out on pussy too? That's what you may as well say. I don't like pussy no more. Used to be good. Like that shit when I was 18. Burnout. Well, go hang out with the disturbed singer then, goddammit. It's consequences. What are the goddamn bots going to answer? Later, goddammit. 